So can you shoot a pistol with night vision? The answer is obviously yes. To rephrase the question, it's can you shoot a pistol accurately and quickly with night vision? In this video, I'd like to talk about some of the different systems on the market, including some of the older ones, and get into some of the specifics and some of the areas that you'll wanna consider when you're outfitting a pistol with a sighting system of some sort when you're looking through some night vision goggles. So you've essentially got four different methods for shooting a handgun with night vision. You obviously have point shooting, kinesthetic shooting, whatever fancy term you wanna use, where you're pre presenting the gun with your natural point of aim and taking shots. Now with your hands being fuzzy and not being able to focus on sights and your night vision being focused on the stars for an infinite focus or at 20 meters or whatever, you're not gonna be able to shoot very accurately and it'll only work up close. You then have tritium sights, which are not that great either. They're super blurry and little blobs and it's very dependent on your lighting conditions, whether you'll see them or not. You have pistol red dots, which have become extremely common lately and are for good reason, which in my opinion is the best way to shoot a pistol with night vision, but more on that later. And then you have IR lasers, uh, just regular pistol mounted light slash lasers. You put on the bottom of your pistol that give you an IR laser, a white light, a vis laser. And that's the most common system that you'll see used on rifles, uh, lasers, IR lasers, PEC 15s, things like that. So what I wanna do is talk about some of the different IR lasers on the market because they've been made for pistols for a long time. Obviously white lights are being made by a lot of different companies. And then here and there companies will make their own IR laser offering, uh, whether it's Steiner or whether it's uh, Insight or whether it's uh, Surefire. So we're gonna talk through some of those, get into some of the weeds on some of the specifics. Some of the specifics you guys can Google if you really wanna read the product manuals for them. I mean, people don't really do that, do they? But I wanna start out by talking about the first one, the most inexpensive one, and we'll kinda of work up from there. And that's the Streamlight VIR2, or II, whichever you wanna call it. So this little guy actually retails for about $380. And basically there's two different methods, sort of, uh, I guess not methods, but kind of systems out there as far as pistol mounted IR lasers. You have kind of a half system and then you have a, what I consider a full system. A half system is a uh, mounted unit that either has a IR laser, IR illuminator only, or it has an IR laser, IR illuminator, viz laser, and viz illuminator. Now the reason it's important to have both lasers, a viz and an IR, is they will be slaved and you can zero it in the day. So lights slash lasers like this, you'll hear me calling it lights, but it's got a laser in it. It also puts out light as well. The problem with this one right here is this is sort of a half system. It's got an IR laser, an IR illuminator, which is a flashlight under night vision essentially, and then it has a viz flashlight but it does not have a viz laser. So the only way I can zero this unit right here is if I'm wearing night vision at a range at dark. I could potentially, if I have a red dot optic, or I could rough zero it in the house or you know somewhere where I'm not live firing, I could line up the laser roughly with my sights and get a, a rough zero for up close. That works. But if I want to refine zero, I'm gonna to have to wear night vision, go somewhere at dark and shoot. should be good to go. Double alphas. We've got two alphas here. Nice. We've got, aha! Two alphas here. Line, center. We've got, oh, check that out. Ooh. As far as shootability, this TLR VIR is one of the easier lasers to shoot with. It's a really simple, just like the TLR one series. Push down, I'm a, I'm a right-handed shooter, obviously. Push down for momentary. As soon as I come off to reload or move, the light you know, automatically comes off. If I have to shoot one-handed with my right finger, I push down and it's in the constant position. And then to turn it off, obviously I just swipe it up and then it's vice versa if you're a left-handed shooter. So pretty awesome little light laser and it's only about 380 bucks.
So a system like this, a half system is kind of what I consider it, is really not as good as something that has a onboard viz laser. But this is inexpensive. It's like $380, $390, something like that. So pretty easy to put this on a gun, a little cheaper than running a red dot. You've obviously got a little switch here on the bottom, which gives you your viz mode, which is your flashlight. There's no laser on board this one, viz laser off mode so it's not going to accidentally turn on uh, for whatever reason or you negligently turn it on and then you have your ir modes which is going to be your viz laser and your viz illuminator so this guy is pretty cool another issue with it is because the battery is uh you run it from the uh, backside right here uh, as soon as you run out of battery you're going to have to remove this from the gun and you're going to have to re-zero it so it's got like i think this one has an hour of runtime on white light and then something like six hours on ir uh, ir output is always a lot less power uh, so you get a lot more runtime if you're doing strictly night vision stuff, which is really convenient. But again, if you have to switch out the battery on this little guy, you're going to have to re-zero it and you're going to have to do it at night with night vision because it has no viz laser. So kind of a problem. The next light laser that's been around for a while is the X400 Vampire. This is another, in my opinion, half system because you don't have a viz laser on board. On the regular X400 you do, it's either a red or a green, I, I believe they do a green one. Uh, but this is the Vampire version, so it's got an IR module here on the bottom, and then you can twist the head to toggle white light or your IR light. So again, because this doesn't have an onboard, onboard slave viz laser, you're going to have to zero it at night with night vision on or like I said, in your house, a rough zero with your iron sights or maybe your red dot. Uh, this has been around a lot longer than some of these out here. Uh, so there are more holsters out there. Uh, T-Rex Arms actually now has a holster for it. This guy right here, Ragnarok. So if you are running an X400 uh, regular, Ultra or the Vampire, uh, you're good to go. Good positive click, good retention, and you are set. Uh, this has some pretty good runtime. It's got, I think, one and a half uh, hours with like 350 lumens. Uh, that's another thing. A lot of these systems out here that are sort of a combined unit with white light and IR. Uh, they don't get the same uh, white light output as other lights out there, like a standard uh, X300 Ultra that's doing a thousand lumens. You know, these are doing like 350, 400 lumens, if that, because there have, there's a lot of other stuff going on inside of it, and they're not able to push a lot of juice to the white light because they're having to use some of it for the IR and then the laser, and there's a bunch of engineering stuff that I don't know because electricity is obviously magic. Uh, getting on, this one's about uh, $900, so, Again, you're getting up there, it's getting pretty expensive to put a laser on your pistol. And then the other big issue with running a laser on these is uh, keeping it zeroed. Uh, if you don't torque it down enough on your frame, uh, it can come loose, which I've obviously had Surefires do before, the B models that have this screw. Um, and then obviously now my laser is completely unzeroed, completely off because the entire thing is wobbling up and down. So as far as maintaining zero, uh, pistol mounted lasers are really, uh, that's a big problem. By getting on, we got the D-Ball PL by Steiner. This is about a grand. I think you can find it for around $900 uh, as well. Uh, there's a couple issues with this one. Obviously, it is quite large. It is a giant box, uh, which creates some issues with holster making, but we also make a holster for this one. Uh, very convenient, a little uh, shameless plug there. Uh, one of the issues with this one is you've got buttons on either side, but they are programmed to be either IR or white light. So the issue becomes on this side, the left side's IR. So if I'm a right-handed shooter, my left thumb is on this pad. I go to press down for momentary, I activate my IR illuminator, my IR laser. But as soon as I need white light, I have to uh, activate that with my index finger, my firing finger, single tap is my green laser, uh, holding down is my white light and my green laser. But while I'm holding this down to get my light and my laser, my viz white and my laser, I cannot shoot because my index finger is obviously on this side. I'd have to do some crazy, uh, really awesome action movie switch with my hands to then run that. And that's really not realistic and it's not much of an option. So this guy right here has some intuition problems, um, which is why I don't like it. But I will say the pressure pads themselves act like a gas pedal when it comes to recoil management. So that is something I really appreciate about this unit. Uh, I just wish there was a switch on the bottom so I could select IR or white light, similar to these other ones, and then I could run either paddle, whether I'm shooting with one hand, running IR, or I'm shooting with this hand on viz mode, and I'd be good to go. And again, it's only like 300 lumens. You're not getting 600 lumens out of it. I didn't mention that earlier about the X400, but you have a little toggle here on the bottom to toggle whether you want illuminator only, white light only, uh, laser only, IR laser only, or uh, white light, uh, or IR illuminator and laser. A lot of these out there, they obviously have uh, options for that where you can run the laser only or have the illuminator, which is really cool. And again, it just comes down to learning your equipment, knowing what you need, uh, you know, when you need it, whether you need the illuminator or you need the laser. Another issue with the D-Ball PL is the delay when I go to hit the button and it actually doesn't come on. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. 
So in the holster, got a guy at 20 meters. Draw it, hold button. Now it comes on. There's like a full second. So we'll do it again. Push. 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 But it is kind of nice because I can see like if my natural point of aim is already on the target. And as you guys could see, it actually was more or less, it was right there. So that's pretty cool. But there's a delay and I don't like it. it slows you down a little bit. So the next one, and it's probably my favorite, is going to be the new Surefire XVL2. And this is what I consider a full system, where you've got an IR laser, a vis laser, an IR light, an IR illuminator, also, also an IR light, really. And then you have a white light. Now the really cool thing with this right here is the batteries go into it from the front. So what this means is, once you zero this laser unit, it's really easy to insert new batteries without having to remove the entire unit itself. Although, on that note, I zeroed it to this Glock 17. This is just a bone stock Gen 3 Glock 17. I zeroed it to this gun a few weeks ago, more like a month ago. Since then, I've pulled this laser off. I put it on again today. I went to verify zero, and it was still pretty good to go. Usually with these uh, lasers out there, as soon as you go back to put them back on the gun, even if you zeroed them on that gun before, usually it's way off. Like, it's just... There's, it's bad tolerancing, uh, Glock rails, pistol rails. It's just, it doesn't usually come right back where it needs to and uh, get back to zero. Uh, but with this guy right here, it actually went back to zero pretty well. Now, maybe that was a coincidence, um, but I actually do think it's because this is a superior unit to the, than what is being made right now. But with that said, it is about $1,300 uh, once it's opened up. These are being made uh, full power for mil LE, obviously, because the FDA doesn't think us civilians can have full power lasers, which is stupid. Um, but there are civilian versions as well, which is what this one is, uh, that Surefire was very gracious enough to give me. So full disclaimer, I did get this one for free, but I would totally go out and buy one. And I may actually buy another one to go on a rifle. So let's talk about this one real quick. The other thing I appreciate about Surefire, uh, some of these lasers out here, they have no instructions on them whatsoever about what's going on. On this D-ball is another thing. I'm kind of jumping around, but whatever. Uh, they don't even have the arrows or the directions on the windage and the elevation turrets on what's going on as far as when you're, when you're zeroing it. So some of these lasers, they kind of slot them together, but they didn't make them user friendly. Whereas you have the Surefire XVL2 here that has a full instruction sheet down here. Basically, you have a little dial here, uh, which is one through seven, and you turn it basically like a little clock, like you got little hands going around. And you can set whether you want off mode, so obviously no discharge of IR light or vis light. You got vis illumination, so just regular white light. You got laser, vis laser and light off again, IR laser, IR illuminator, IR laser, and IR illuminator. But they have it clearly indicated here. It's not something you have to go memorize with the manual in hand going back and forth. They just have it clearly right here. Windage and elevation right here is clearly indicated on the unit where the battery is. Changing out the battery is really simple. Twist from the front, simple uh, CR123 right there and you're good to go. I don't have to remove it from the gun. So if you were building like a dedicated night vision pistol that had an IR laser for whatever reason, uh, this is the one I would definitely recommend. And this is something that I'm actually probably going to be using more. I don't usually use IR lasers on pistols. I just run a dot. But this guy right here, I would definitely uh, consider running. The other thing that they're doing is eventually, no idea when, and I will say Surefire is not always the fastest company at you know getting products out to us, but Eventually, they're going to have switch systems like the DG, uh, like on this uh, USP, where I can actually activate it while gripping the pistol normally like so. So I can very easily uh, run the weapon without having to break my support hand grip. The only downside to a, a pad, you know, pressure pad like this is it's very easy to accidentally or negligently activate it when you don't want to. So it takes, in my opinion, a lot more training to get accustomed to running one of these and, you know, only discharge the light or the IR illumination or laser uh, when you actually need it. But it is is pretty cool that they're planning on making that for this including pressure pads for rifles and things like that uh, the other issue with this is obviously it is quite fat it is quite large quite thick um, but we've already made a holster for it uh, we're one of the first companies to actually go out and make a holster for it and it is also very thick and very fat um, but it does work it runs well i've been running this and so that's something i really appreciate about this laser now the question is are IR lasers going to be effective? And the answer is they're really good for a few things. For example, if you have a pistol or this is what's happened in the military is, you know, a large body of individuals get issued a pistol. And this is obviously way before red dot times on pistols. And so you don't have red dots on the market or you're issued a handgun that cannot support a side mounted optic like a Bred or an M9 or something, or you have something like this. 
a CZ75, which is not going to take a slide mounted optic very easily. So if I wanna all of a sudden make this a night vision compatible handgun where I can actually run this with nods, I can now slap on a laser and have a way of accurately shooting that weapon. And that's why we've seen IR lasers you know, pop up on the market and get made for the military and get made for people because some units, uh, some organizations are issued a gun or they go out and buy a gun that can't take a red dot or red dots weren't available at the time, but now they have a way of actually using it in a rare instance where they might need it under night vision. Uh, this is an old PEC 14. Um, it's actually, it's pretty cool. It's obviously pretty vintage. They don't make it anymore, uh, but it is what was issued out there uh, on the M9, which obviously was way before red, slide mounted red dot time. Uh, and it gave guys the ability to shoot. I got my little pressure pad uh, taped up right here. So it's uh, pretty old school and it's pretty legit. But again, now I have a way of shooting this with night vision accurately once this is zeroed. And this is a full unit. It's got incandescent bulb, uh, 80 to 100 lumens, a vis laser, IR laser, and I'm good to go with this guy. So pretty cool. So you've obviously got the positive of running a laser on a pistol that can't run, you know, have a red dot or can't have another sighting system for night vision. So you're able to slap that laser unit on there and then you can accurately shoot with night vision. But then you also have a few others, uh, shield use, uh, signaling where I can, you know, paint a laser on something that all my buddies can see and go, ah, he's aiming at the store. I can see exactly where he's aiming with his illuminator, which is very bright and nobody's gonna mistake that. You also have greedoing someone under a table. Uh, which is a little harder to do with just sights and a red dot. Uh, but the reality is lasers in general on handguns, whether they're VIZ or IR, are just very limited in their field, which is why I much prefer having a red dot on a pistol. What this allows me to do is have the exact same zero, because obviously with a laser, I'm having to pick uh, you know, a 10 meter or 20 meter or whatever zero. And with these, there's gonna be convergence at whatever my zero is. And then after I get past that, it's going to get wildly off. Uh, you're probably not gonna get away with a straight up parallel zero on one of these handguns like a PEC-15, because it's, you know, this is a much more unstable weapon. It's a much more inaccurate weapon to shoot. So you're gonna have to rely on this at 10 or 20, and then after that, it's going to be off. I recommend a 20, uh, but you can figure out and test whatever you wanna do. But with a red dot, I don't have that problem. All I have to worry about, provided I zero my weapon adequately, is my uh, my elevation, which is you know, obviously going to only be a problem if I take shots at insane range under nods, which is probably not going to happen. The other thing about running a red dot with a handgun is, when I push this gun out to presentation, uh, like I do thousands and thousands of times training in the day, this dot is just magically there. It's floating, I've got my focus on the stars or 10 or 20 meters out, and all I have is a floating dot out there. The gun's out of focus, my hands are out of focus, and I can just put that dot on stuff and I'm good to go. Then the second thing that I have on this handgun is a Surefire X300 Vampire. So basically what I have is IR illumination, so if I'm in a place or maybe I'm here at the range and I don't have a full moon, so I have very little light, but I need to illuminate certain targets or see like is this a shoot or a no shoot type of target, I'm able to smash this guy, get some illumination on it because that's what an IR illuminator is, basically white light, basically a flashlight that only people will see with night vision, can't see with the naked eye, minus a little bit of red emitting from the front. And then I can start engaging like that. And again, as soon as I activate that, I still have my little floating dot that I just need to control with my side buttons to get it the right uh, brightness. And I just put that dot on things and go to town. So as far as you know, shooting fast and accurately, this is what I much prefer, is having a gun that can take a red dot, can take an IR uh, flashlight, illuminator, uh, like this X300, but I could run one of these other laser systems and just use the uh, IR illuminator setting on it and have the laser for signaling if I need it, and then I have both options. I can run the red dot if I need to, I can run the illumination if I need to, and then if I have to signal for whatever reason, I could switch over to my laser mode, I could signal and go, eh, that thing over there, what's going on? And then I can move on from there and I can you know, focus on my red dot as my primary sighting system and maybe use my laser as a backup. Now that's becoming a very expensive weapon. You're looking at, you know, a red dot with slide milling being 
you know, like $700, and then you're looking at, you know, a $1,300, uh, you know, laser or a $1,000 laser. So it's starting to get pretty expensive. And that is another thing I want to touch on real fast is the, you know, cost of some of this equipment as you guys are trying to plan what you're going to get. You can obviously go get one of these expensive IR lasers like this Surefire, you know, XVL2 that's $1,300 or this D-Ball that's $1,000. But what I would actually recommend for you is getting a red dot instead because you're looking at, you know, five $600 for a quality pistol red dot, maybe $400, you know, for like a Delta Point. And then you're looking at $150 to $250 or something like that for slide milling. But what you get out of it is a pistol you can shoot accurately under night vision, but you can also shoot in the day at all times. So it's not like you spend $1,000 on this piece of equipment you use for 1% of the time. I'm now able to spend you know, cheaper money or the same amount of money for something I can use literally 100% of the time. Low light, in the day, and with night vision. So that's another reason I much prefer having a red dot on a handgun. I can use it all the time. It's a little bit more cost effective in the grand scheme of things, unless you're gonna get something like the Streamlight. So that's what I would recommend if you're looking into something that gets you right into shooting accurately and quickly. Seven six three. 